Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be showing you something that you can forge cold and make a little bit of money at. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here we are. This is a little project that you can take and forge cold. You say, well this is an awful large chunk of steel and you would be right with that. But really with this type of project, all we're going to do is essentially texture the edges. Now this will be a calling card for most people to jump off and bye bye. Well, enjoy your day. But for those that want to take and stay around and stick around, see how we can turn this into a profitable little venture, even though it's been forged cold, stick on around. So here's how we are going to take and give this thing some dimension and a little bit of depth. Now, this is a piece, a design that I bought online. I will put a link in the description down below. But essentially this is a lasered out or plasma cut out cross. If you have a plasma cutter, great. You can just take and make up any design you want and do this all cold. This here I bought from a gentleman online. And like I said, I'll put a link in the description down below. This is not a sponsored video. It's just a way that you guys can take and make a little extra cash. Now, the things you're going to need for this project is a countersink or a chamfer bit. You will need a quarter inch drill bit. And then you will also need however many rivets you decide to rivet this together, rivets. I will also put a link to a site that you can get rivets in the description down below if I can. But once again, fairly simple quarter inch rivets. And then that's all you need for this project. So when I say you can forge this cold, you can forge this cold with just an anvil and a fairly heavy hammer. And when I say fairly heavy, you know me, I like to use lightweight hammers. So my ideal of a fairly heavy hammer is a three pound cross pin. And you'll see here in a second how we can take and do that. The one thing that is important to point out before we get going is I just roughed out where the drill holes are going to be, started them, but I did not drill the holes yet. As when we peen up these edges, the metal is going to stretch and that's going to give us some, some wonky looking holes and that's not what we want. Essentially this whole project is going to be texturing, drilling our holes, and then attaching these two pieces together to make a very nice wall hanging cross. Now this can be done in any sort of shape or menagerie. Uh, you can find all sorts of plans and shapes. Like I said, if you have a plasma cutter yourself, you can make this anything. This could be a horse head, this could be anything like this. And adding a nice decorative little forged rivet into the design can really help out. But those are the main things that you will need for this project. And the last but not least, your touch mark somewhere to put it on there. The ideal price for something like this, as you're going to have quite a bit of time per hole with drilling and getting your, your rivet set, would be of around $65. Around in that range, up to, depending on how decorative you got with it or elaborate, maybe $125. So $65 to maybe $125 is something that you can expect that this would sell for in the right market space. So without further ado, let's get to the texturing bit. So to cold texture this first part, it is as follows. Now you can do this however you like. You can add whatever type of surface texture you want. I'm just going to do a simple border texture around these pieces to keep it as simple and clean as I can. I like to use a very nice 3 8 inch radius on a three pound cross peen hammer. If you will also look, these are relieved slightly, ever so slightly, to the front and back of the peen, this way and that way, and that kind of creates a bit of a ball. So I'm going to aim with that bit of a ball on the edge of the piece and create myself some scalloping. You want to avoid hitting your anvil, so take whatever cautions, whatever precautions you need to do to do that. 
work out towards the edge or however you gotta do it. And essentially, we're just going to do this all the way around and we're gonna do this on both pieces. So once again, this is a good way to practice hammer control all at the same time. If you find yourself lacking in hammer control, my advice is to practice these type projects. They really help you out. But essentially we're going to just go right on around with that all the way around. Wash, rinse, and repeat. You want to keep this as flat as possible because once again this is going to be a flat wall cross in the long run. Now, now when I said that you can buy this online, yes, that means you're going to have to spend money for someone to bring you this far, but it sure hex beat having to plasma cut it out by hand. When you can take and buy these, I forget what was paid on there. There'll be a price on the site. Obviously, you guys can go check it out. But when you're making 65 bucks and you didn't have to plasma cut that, it really helps out on the profit side of things. And so therefore, I would say it's definitely worth it. So, as you can see, we're just going right on around. Just trying to make this look nice and old. It's been around a long time. Nothing special to it. Those crooks are probably the hardest portion. You can see how it's starting to come up. Now one thing I can tell you, if you keep your hammer in one position hitting, but move the piece and don't move your hammer, it makes this a lot easier to control. So just feed the material in a little bit at a time incrementally, and there you go. It makes it a lot easier to take and get that done. So there's the first bit. Now we'll go on to the second part. I'm doing this all pretty much straight up so you guys can see that I am doing this whole thing cold, and you can see how that works. So down here, we're going to do the same thing as we did on the upper one. You get, there's no right or wrong way of how you do this. You don't have to use a 3 8 pin if you don't want to. You can use a sharper peen or a dollar peen. You don't have to do scalloping. You could do just some flat banks. In fact, we'll go ahead and switch these up and do that. And I'm not working very hard here, guys. I'm not trying to whale well the heck out of this thing. I'm just trying to take and bounce the hammer. We chose, two, we chose two different ways of doing this. You can mix and match to give them some dimension. But there's more of a bladed or banked look. So you can do whatever makes you feel good on that. Just work the different angles of your anvil. 
whatever will work good for you. We're going to go like that. Then I'm going to hold it back this way. Try to hold back down. This is probably going to be your difficult part. If anybody that's ever had to hammer in bevels on anything before, can attest to. Hey, this is even something a knife maker could do. And there we go. So, as you can see, you just repeat this on all sides. like to point out this is all still done cold there hasn't been no change no development change or anything here this is all still done very much cold if you're an ambidextrous smith you can use both hands Beat in your bevels, so on and so forth, like that. There we have it. Now, you guys are seeing how this is looking. And just like that, that is all done cold. Of course, the added benefit is if you can do this hot, this takes so much less time to knock this out hot. Now all we're doing is giving it a straighten so it sits flush. And there you have it. I'll be back with you after I get those drilled. Okay, now we have this all drilled out. So, your first one that you're going to want to do, and you're going to have to resist the urge, is to take in, go ahead and drill all these holes all the way through into the back cross plate all at once. That is a bad idea. Don't do that. Reason for that being is as you swell this rivet out, the material, these two materials will want to move. And when they when they move, they get canted, even in the slightest, your rivet holes will no longer line up and you will fight every last rivet in this thing. So, how do we go about assembling this then, since there's so many rivets? Well, you need to establish four points of contact first. Then you can go on and then just drill the rest of these and those go a lot quicker but you have to get your four points of contact done first. How do we do that, you may ask? Well, one at a time. We're gonna drill this hole, and on the back side, we're gonna countersink the hole, so this way the rivet is flush on the back, but leaves the crown of the head up front. How are we gonna do that? Well, we are going to use what I made in another video called a rivet block. And all this does is protect the head, the round head, from being deformed while we are doing this process. This is a kind of a critical tool if you want to keep the head round, or if you want to, if you're going to forge and texture this head anyhow, it's really not that big of a deal. Just go ahead and go that way. That's why I didn't include this at the beginning of the video and talked about it, just because if you haven't went through the trouble of making that yet, which this is hot work, then obviously you probably don't have it. So, you're going to want to get this lined up the way you want it, and it's just as simple as taking a silver marking pencil, 
getting everything lined up the way you want so where all the spaces look e equal and just drawing on it with a silver marking pencil take that away voila there's our mark we'll center punch mark that and drill that one first after we drill it we'll countersink it and then we will make that our very first rivet joint the next rivet joint we're going to do is going to be at the bottom great part is this will already be riveted to this and all held together so all we will have to do is drill this hole and then go ahead and put the rivet through rivet it and then this hole and then this hole and so on and so forth until you get them all done once these four corners are all established the top the two arms and the foot is all established you can then just drill all the excess holes and go ahead and get them all through in one go, which makes that a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this, countersink it from the back side, and we will go ahead and rivet that together. Okay, so here we are. We've got that head in there. You have to decide whether you wanna take and leave it round or not. I'm going to go ahead and use my rivet heading block here and keep it round as what I have decided. So I just set it on that block. Make sure the pieces are flushed down. And just like that, we've peened it down and we've saved the head. Just like that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Very well. We'll readjust the zoom here. Voila. Nice flush rivet from the back. Nice rivet from the front. So you might be asking yourself, how long do you know to make the rivet? Well, for a flush rivet, you're going to want to go a little less than one and a half times the diameter of the material. So whatever the thickness is here, in this case, this is I believe it is 9.5 mil in total, or 3 eighths of an inch thick. So you're going to want just about 3 eighths of an inch sticking out if you can, or just a little less than 3 eighths of an inch, depending on how big the cavity is that needs to be filled or just a little less than 9.5 mil. So just wanted to let you know that, that that's how you figure that out. It takes a little bit of trial and error, so I suggest doing it on a scrap piece first, and it also is a great way of practicing. So now we have that together. Now the next thing we gotta do is go ahead and attach this down here, and then the arms, and then we can go to town on the rest of them. Wash, rinse, and repeat. I'll come back to you after I've got the foot and the arms done. Here we are. We've got our foot rivet set, arm rivet sets, and then the head of the cross rivet sets. So now this is fairly immobile. Now we can go along and drill all these holes out in one go. Go ahead and countersink them on the back sides so this way we have our flush rivets and go to town on riveting these. This little project worked out pretty well. I'll put a link to the description. I'll put a link in the description to this video if you guys care to look at it. And I will also put a in card at the end of this video as well that you guys can click on to, yeah, go see how I made this little bit. It was a whole process where I've made all sorts of stuff. Everything from rivet sets to these bucking blocks, rivet blocks to the ball punches to make this as well. So it ought to be a pretty interesting or riveting series. Without further ado and tomfoolery, let's drill the rest of these and I'll be back over here and we'll hammer them all up. All right, so here we are. This is where the tricky part's going to end up coming into play because now we have four rivets in here that all need to take and stay roughly. And so you're just gonna have to kind of mess around with it a little bit some of them will want to drop out, that's okay. It's just, you know, you just take your time and get this to where it'll 
lay in there like it's supposed to. Also, if you've got a very large rivet heading block, it may end up hitting one of your other heads of your rivets, so you may have to adjust this around. This is a fairly small block, so it works out pretty good. So we got that one set. And my suggestion is, is to go right on around these here and set one at a time as you can do it. Get them adjusted, get them all set up here. And you can even just give them all a preliminary setting so this way they don't go nowhere. It's a fairly easy thing to do. Just hold them in here. Like I said, make sure that your rivets aren't getting damaged in any way or in the right, they're in the right area. And so on and so forth. This is a really nice way of taking and making a project from start to finish without having any heat. Now if you want, after you get all these done, the best way to do this is wire wheel this all up to get anything cleaned off of it and then just heat it up if you can with some sort of torch or put it in the oven. You can put it in your home oven even and then go ahead and oil it down and it creates a really nice finish on your cross here. Just one way of doing it if you don't have a forge. Uh, so, I won't even focus on trying to hold that rivet in. So I give that a little setting blow. Make sure this other rivet's still in place. Give that a little setting blow. Like I said, spin them down. there we have it. So there's all of our flush rivets done. And I'll just go ahead and say this. I love the look of rivets in a metal piece. But as you can see, that looks wildly different than just the flat, dull piece of steel that it started out as. You didn't have to cut it from a plate of steel yourself. So it's a win on multiple counts. I haven't used any fuel. Just some simple hand tools of drill bits and rivets that are all already pre-made. So hopefully that will help. I will go ahead and wire wheel this up and get it finished and I'll put a video here at the end of this video. I, I will put a picture at the end of this video, excuse me, and then you guys can, you know, let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching this video. God bless you and like I always say, we'll catch you on the next one.